Hi there. Um, it's been a little while since I've done a blog, really, um, because, um, well, uh, after my fourth chemotherapy, I wasn't really very well. Um, just for some of you that don't know, you, you know, you can always get a second opinion um, and be referred to another hospital or another consultant if you're not sure of your treatment or your care or you just want to question things. And I did that. I had a referral to Manchester and saw a very nice guy there, mention no names, and um, he looked at my histology report and everything and decided that um, a different, slightly different uh, course of treatment would be viable. And um, I'm now having a totally different chemotherapy, really, regime, and I'm, it means also I'm having docetaxel instead of FEC and I'm also having Herceptin as well so that might not mean much to a lot of people but basically some of my treatment has been brought forward a little bit because it can be um, because the two together and um, it's, well I'm happy about it anyway I mean I'm a nurse and I researched it and I'm happy about the treatment that I'm getting but it is more aggressive than anyone having um, docetaxel for breast cancer or any other type of cancer will know that it can no knock you um, about quite a bit uh, so last time when I went I had the two and I stayed in hospital all day just in case I got a reaction and um, when I came home I felt f fine to begin with just a little bit tired and then I developed the bone pain because it gets into the, the bone marrow well it gets everywhere really and um, can give you considerable pain so I started taking painkillers now obviously I was taking paracetamol and ibuprofen and codeine and it's still the pain the pain um, so then I started taking morphine as well, I started taking morphine, um, not with codeine obviously, not the two together, um, and knocked off some of the um, other drugs because they, they might have been concealing a temperature because obviously when you have chemotherapy you've got to be careful that um, you don't get a temperature because obviously any infection that you can get when you've got chemo um, can, you know, well, they can be fatal really and uh, you don't want that. So. Uh, there we are. I mean, I, I um, kept an eye on my temperature when I was taking all of these the medication, and unfortunately, I developed an infection. I must have somehow. I rang the hospital, and they said I've got to get an ambulance uh, to go into A and E to start intravenous antibiotics. So off I trundled in the back of an ambulance. Um, God. And um, they put me and um, went to the emergency department and then put me um, on IV antibiotics, meropenem, TGS three times a day um, for a week, seven days. Um, I spent a little bit of time on the medical admissions unit where I used to work, which was lovely to see some of the old guys there. It was lovely, you know, like a home from home, really. And then they sent me to the private um, ward and I was there for a week, as I say, a week. Um, it wasn't very nice, I mean, intense pain and um, I can see why people say they don't want to go through it, but as I say, it's doing the trick. I mean, it's um, killing the cancer, that's amazing. So, had that, and then um, eventually they decided they were going to scan my liver as well because I got abnormal liver results, and uh, that was a very scary time. You know, I was actually asked if I'd got liver cancer, and um, I saw a palliative care nurse and, and then obviously with the scan and you know, I rang Manchester to see what they thought and I was kept trying to ask anyway, everyone, do you think this is just because of all the medication I've been on, you know, with the chemo and the IV antibiotics, which is like domestic running through your veins and, and with the paracetamol and everything else I've been taking, I thought maybe the liver just can't cope with it all, you know. But um, nobody would give me a sort of like a straight answer and I think by looking at people's faces, I think some of them thought I might have cancer of the liver as well. So. That was a horrible, horrible time and um, scared the living daylights out of me that to think that I wouldn't see my children grow up anymore and, you know, see them in the future was tearing me apart, really. I mean, it was awful. But I've got through that now and I'm back home and I've got a few war wounds. I've got, um, you can see, but I've got sore hands and I've got um, very sore veins um, here. Uh, got a bit of a rash all over really I know I look healthy in the face thank god the face isn't covered in a rash because otherwise I'd have to wear a bag on my head um, so anyway back to now what, normality at home really just trying to recover just been for a mile walk which wasn't as far as I anticipated 
but I thought you know walking eating little bits of healthy food often plenty of fluids try and flush my system out because my liver's been through the mill try and get ready for the next onslaught which I'm not really looking forward to to be honest with you because um, next time I'm having the same drugs again which obviously I'm going to stop itching um, did that to me last time and also I'm going to have a port fitted into my chest I don't know if you can see that but they're going to put a port um, obviously through the jugular here into the top of the heart um, and then they're going to make a hole um, underneath um, the chest wall here um, underneath the skin really just the skin and, and the fat layer and they're going to put a little port in there so every time I have to have chemotherapy they can just go straight into that port so it will save all those bloody needles and them stabbing at me like um, they're carving up the Sunday roast because just about had enough of that really as well uh, so yeah just preparing for the next one um, not very nice but as I say necessary um, just to say uh, that I read a really interesting article in the um, that the Express while I was in hospital and there's a guy in London called um, what the bloody hell's his name I put it in a bit of paper somewhere Gerald Evans that's it now that was why I wrote that on a bit of paper because I wanted to remember that but basically um, with cancer research that they've been doing they've actually found like a um, immunization a vaccine that affects the immune system and um, helps the immune system to, to fight and kill off the cancer itself so you have that alongside chemotherapy but well, that's nearly a cure it's nearly a cure that's coming up now so I feel compelled to I'm definitely going to send money to cancer research every every month now just a couple of quid or whatever um, because obviously our children in the future won't have to go through all this and um, which would be fantastic so that's you know an imp a massive improvement really uh, so very 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 good anyway I'm waffling on a little bit now I think and I need to scratch my leg because it's driving me crazy um, anyone else is going through this bloody shame you know my heart goes out to everyone and and I hope that everyone that's going through this they, that you get better very very soon and um, all my love